Hello everyone, in today's workout is a posterior chain workout. In this workout, we'll learn about the exercises which will strengthen our posterior chain and strengthen our posterior muscles. Let's not wait, let's get to the anatomy of the posterior chain. All right guys, this is the skeleton as you can see. This is the posterior side of the body. Posterior means back side of the body. And these muscles are the uh, posterior muscles. We train them because back muscles will help your movement, your all the movement backwards, how you move your body and everything you do backwards. Let's look at the anatomy in detail. These muscles form the posterior side, the back side of the body, upper, lower, and middle. Here we can see rear delts, lats, trapezius muscle, erector spiny, obliques, external oblique muscles. In this picture, we can see glutes as a whole, and they are made of three different muscles, minimus, medius, and maximus, which means the upper middle and lower part of the glutes. And we, these are the middle part of the posterior chain. They are very important. They make a link between the upper and lower posterior chain muscles. This is the lower part of the posterior chain, which includes hamstrings and calves. The hamstrings are, cons are, are including semitendinosus and semimembranous muscles, whereas the calves are including gastrocnemius and soleus muscles. After understanding the anatomy of the posterior chain, what do posterior chain muscles do? They help us in strengthening the lower back and leg muscles. They help in building our stamina, strength, and speed. They improve our posture, and give us a firm tone look. They contribute to our core strength and decrease the chances of having a pelvic tilt. They help us in lifting weights and lifting items in our daily lives. Stand underneath a pull-up bar. Reach up and grab the bar with an overhand grip that is a little more than shoulder width. Your arms will be fully extended. Pull your shoulders down and toward each other while you pull your body upward toward the bar. Pause at the top and reverse the move to the starting position. The pull-up targets the latissimus dorsi, trapezius, rhomboids, rear shoulders, and erector spinae, all upper body posterior chain muscles. Australian pull or inverted rows can used as an option for traditional pull-ups. Position yourself correctly. Grip the bar. Maintain a straight line. Pull the bar to your chest. Get back into the starting position. Australian pull-up strengthens your grip and targets mid-back muscles. To a certain extent it can also give your lower back muscles a quick workout. Set a kettlebell on the floor. Stand over it with your feet shoulder width apart. Bring your shoulders back and down, and engage the core muscles. Press your hips back and bend your knees as you tip your torso forward to pick up the kettlebell. Grasp the kettlebell with both hands and make sure your shoulders are back. Squeeze your glutes and hamstrings to extend the hips, and swing the kettlebell. According to this study published in 2019, kettlebell exercises can be used as an alternative in improving aerobic conditioning, muscular strength and endurance. According to a study in 2018, kettlebell exercises have the ability to restore muscle mass and improve grip strength in older adults. According to Harvard Health, kettlebell exercises can also help improve your posture and balance. Kettlebell swings works all the upper and lower body muscles. They build joint stability. They improve spinal, shoulder and hip stability dramatically. Because kettlebell swings strengthen all of the spinal, shoulder, scapular and hip stabilizer muscles. Kettlebell workouts could help decrease stomach fat, build stronger abs, increase circulation, and improve balance. They allow for versatile workouts that may help improve longevity. Except swings we can do kettlebell squats, deadlifts, floor presses and bent over rows to build muscle. This study published in 2018 and 2019 revealed.
Kettlebell exercises may elicit cardiovascular, neuromuscular and metabolic responses, sufficient for improvements in strength aerobic power and overall physical fitness. Firstly choosing double overhand grip, mixed grip or hook grip. Begin by squatting behind a weighted Olympic bar. Grasp it with hands just outside the legs. Using the legs, and keeping the back straight and core tight, push upward and lift the weight to a standing position. Slowly lower back to starting position by bending the knees and flexing at the hips. This EMG study illustrated that conventional deadlift will generally require the greatest mobility requirements to get into the right setup position. In addition, it will also place the more strain on the lumbar spine. This study also indicated erector spinae and quadriceps muscles are more activated than gluteus maximus and biceps femoris muscles with deadlift exercise. In hamstring muscles complex, semitendinosus muscle elicited greater activation than biceps femoris during Romanian deadlift. Deadlifts increase posterior chain strength while promoting the fundamental movement pattern, the hip hinge. The conventional deadlift elicits roughly 8% more shear force on the lumbar spine when compared to the sumo deadlift. This is mainly because the starting position is more horizontal during the conventional deadlift. Conventional deadlift involves the greatest strain on the lower back. How to do hip thrust? Start by lying in a supine position. With your back on a flat bench and have a barbell loaded with weight plates over your legs. Use a pad on the bar or have a fat bar to reduce the discomfort on your hip crease. The hip thrust primarily targets gluteus maximus and also activates hamstrings, quadriceps, and adductors secondarily. According to this study, the sequence of excitation by barbell hip thrusters is gluteus maximus, erector spinae, biceps femoris, semitendinosus, vastus lateralis, gluteus medius, vastus medialis and rectus femoris. The hip thrust was invented and popularized by Brett Contreras. It is a good glute-focused exercise to increase muscle growth and further hip extension abilities for more complex and compound movements like squats, deadlifts and even jogging. It primarily targets gluteus maximus. Hamstrings and adductors work secondarily. To increase glute strength start by performing 3 to 5 sets of 12 reps. Another EMG study found. Barbell hip thrusts activates the gluteus maximus and biceps femoris to a greater degree than the back squat when using estimating 10 RM loads. Glutes themselves are roughly 50 to 50 fast and slow twitch muscle fibers, which means for the best development, they should be trained in a variety of rep ranges. To increase glute endurance and muscle hypertrophy they should be trained in a moderate to higher rep range. Good mornings, Romanian deadlifts and banded hip extensions are good alternatives to hip thrusts. How to do a back squat. Stand in a squat rack with the bar behind you. Feet should be shoulder width apart, and toes pointed slightly out. Step back until the bar is resting on your traps. Grab the bar with a wide overhand grip. Step forward, so the bar is off the hinges. Keep your chest up and begin to squat. Drop down until your thighs reach parallel and pause. Push through your foot. Back squats place a greater emphasis on the posterior chain muscles than the front squat. The back squat relies more on the glutes, hamstrings, and lower back, with secondary recruitment from the quads and calves. According to this study, overall muscle activity increased with increasing loads. But significant increases were only seen in vastus medialis and gluteus maximus during 90% and 100% of 1RM compared to 80%, where no significant difference in another study revealed, the range of motion in back squat alters muscle activation of the gluteus maximus and the stabilizers. Partial back squat maximizes the glute activation. In the front squat, the bar should be resting between your anterior deltoids and the front of your traps. The biggest culprit is scapular position. You want to protract your scapulae like you are trying to pinch a pencil between your pecs. So your clavicles will shift forward as well. That should put your anterior deltoids far enough in front of your neck that you have a nice shelf to rest. Athletes who are able to squat below parallel show a greater activation of their glutes, the biggest contributor in the production of speed and jump height. This EMG study suggested, the front squat may be preferred to the back squat for knee extensor development and preventing lumbar injuries during maximal loading. The goblet squat, like the sumo squat focuses on not only quadriceps but the inner thighs and our posterior chain as well. This squat variation is a great addition to a lower body routine to strengthen and tone the legs. 
it does require some moderate flexibility to perform correctly. Practicing this move without weight to begin is recommended. It can be used as an alternative during injury. The muscle excitation sequence is gluteus maximus, erector spinae, biceps femoris, semitendinosus, vastus lateralis, gluteus medius, vastus medialis and rectus femoris. If you are using a back extension bench, the first thing to do is set up the pads so you can lie forward with freedom to bend at the waist. The bench should be at a 45 degree angle this will allow for a greater range of movement than a flat bench. Ensure your feet are secure against the pads, then bend forwards, keeping your back flat. Fold forward until you feel stretch and slowly bring torso back. Back extension exercise can strengthen lower back muscles. This includes erector spinae, which supports the lower spine. Back extensions also work the muscles in your butt, hips and shoulders. If you have low back pain, back extension exercises might provide relief. Usually low back pain is affected by weak low back muscles. Back extensions can be used as a part of your core workout. Back extensions should be done slowly and under control. Keep your head and neck neutral at all times, and don't arch your back. The CMG study of erector spinae and multifidus showed high level of recruitment during trunk holding 79% and leg holding 68%. They were working as a single functional unit in back extension exercise. As a strength training beginner bodyweight extensions will initially help you build type 2 muscle fibers. Once you get to a point where back extensions start being a less intensive they will help you build more type 1 muscle fibers. If you add external weights you can continue building more fast type 2 muscle fibers. Back extensions can improve your athletic performance and bone density. According to this team of researchers in the Department of Exercise and Sport Science at the University of Wisconsin. In this study they recruited 19 healthy males between the ages of 18 to 25 years old. They all had previous resistance training experience and were familiar with the exercises included in this study. In this study, TRX, bent over row, chin up, inverted row, lot pull down, seated row, pull up, and IYT raises were executed to see the activation of erector spinae. The results of this study revealed the highest activation of erector spinae among eight exercises was by bent over rows. Please subscribe and comment saying I subscribed. I will personally reply to your comment. Thank you.